G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, taps and dies, every workshop's got to have taps and dies, they're super handy. And you can have small sets or big sets or have them loose. I've got both, everything. I've got stacks of them. This is this set I bought when I was in my teens, and my first set of taps and dies. It's Japanese, good little set. And I've broken plenty over the years. Anyway, moved on to high speed steel, which is a better bet. So, what's the big deal about taps and dies? Why are we discussing it? Well, if you've got taps and dies, you've got to have a you've got to have a tap holder. Well, there's not one in this set, and you've got to have a die holder. Here's your die holder. And over the years, I've never had a a tap follower. Now, a tap follower and a die follower are both they both do the same thing. They keep the the tap or the die in the correct position, the correct angle, the correct plane when you're cutting the thread and that's to stop your thread pulling one way or going in on an angle because threads can do that. Taps have got a nasty habit of uh, going offline if you freehand them. So the idea is yes, you do it in a pillar drill or a mill or a drill press or even the lathe if possible and that way you can keep everything in line. So I've never had a tap follower and recently I was looking at a channel, a pretty new channel and it's a channel I'm going to give a shout out to and it's called John's Workshop. John's in the UK and he's a professional machinist and the channel's really good, he puts up some really interesting stuff he knows the job and yeah it's a good 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 place to go to learn stuff anyway recently he made up a, a tap follower and i was quite impressed with it i thought yeah it's not bad i could really do with one of those i just <laughs> over the years i've just got by using a dead center and put a bit of pressure on it with a drill press or the uh, tail stop but a proper uh, tap follower is spring loaded, keeps pressure on, keeps it all located, makes it a lot easier. And they're pretty simple. I've just never ever got around to making one. So, anyway, John made one and he did a real good job of it. It looks terrific, it works well, and it wasn't that difficult. And I thought, yeah, maybe it's time. So, I had a look at the junk heap, the scrap pile, and I, I got some steel out. And I'll show you what I've made. It's slightly different to John's, not a lot but it's my take on uh, a, ta a, a tap follower. Let's have a look at it. Well, here's my take on it. It's a little bit different to John's, not a lot. I've got it down to, well, two major components plus the spring inside. And here's your pointy end. The one that John made has got the pointy end and it's also got a screw on cone so you can actually change it and you use the cone for for uh, taps that don't have a center point on them on mine the cone is on the other end of the plunger so there's nothing to screw no threads to cut when you make it you just undo this little screw and out she comes turn it around put it put it in put it up and now you've got a, a cone end on it. Pretty easy and simple to, to machine up. Now, the, the body is made out of good quality steel that I had, machine grade. And I drilled it and then ran a boring bar up it. You can, I mean that was right up to there. That's a pretty fair length to use a boring bar on but it was all doable, no problem whatsoever. The bolt is uh, five mil Allen headed. You drill your and tap your your, th your thread first, and then you do your knurling. The knurling is there for two reasons: one is to grip it when you poke it into your collar, chuck, and the other one is to it compresses the the thread, makes like a locking thread so 
it tightens it up when you tap a thread. You don't really know how tight it's going to be in this case. It was okay, normal, but by knurling it afterwards, I did that deliberately, I knew it would tighten up the, the thread and make it uh, stay in place better. So that's why I did that. Now, the spring behind this, this is out of my spring uh, tin. It's not very big, but it's big enough. So the spring goes in. This travels back against the spring and it can actually fully compress the spring for maximum pressure. And when it does that, it goes back. Now the, the little screw here can't get damaged because it only goes back to just before the screw. So that's, the, that's your travel range there, in or out. The captive screw keeps it there. This is all easily machined. Uh, this is good hard steel, but it is machinable with high speed steel. And of course it's, you can nail it as well. Now, actually I'll, I'll take this out, I'll show you something. I suppose you're wondering why there's a, a keyway in this taper. Well, this is all made out of scrap steel and I wanted good quality hard steel to make this component because it's going to get some wear and tear. So what did I use? Well, I used one of these. Now what's that? Well you can see that it's got a keyway the same as that's got a keyway and that bit there is this bit here out of another one and what it is it's the crankshaft out of a two-stroke whipper snipper or leaf blower I can't remember which and you just press out the the main shaft and then you can machine it up to whatever you want uh, the keyway doesn't really matter it doesn't look out of place I had to leave it there to get the length but it just shows you once again how junk steel can be handy in this case I know it's going to be good quality steel to be used for an application like that it has to be, be up to the the task so that's why I went for that so there you go yet another example of there's no such thing as junk and if you'd like to uh, do machining on the cheap save all this stuff because one day one day it'll come in handy it's just uh, the right bit of steel for the job at the time here it is in the collet and uh, yeah turns into quite a neat unit really the uh, the shank on this is 19 mil I could have made it 20 but the steel I was working with was only 20 so by the time I machined a finish into it I, I lost a, a mil so it, it had to go to 19 but anyway it doesn't really matter it's plenty strong enough and yeah kissing cousins they fit together beautifully so there you go, there's another useful little project you can do and yeah, it's not hard to make. It's uh, something anybody I think could do. Good opportunity to check out your skills and uh, see what sort of job you can make of it. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Cheers.